All right, so let's talk about Graham's Law. Graham's Law states that the rate of effusion for a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. Now, let's break that down into, into what exactly that means. Okay, so we, let's define the word diffusion because the word effusion comes from the word diffusion. Okay, so diffusion means the movement of one material through another. So let's say, let's use this, uh, let's create a visual for ourselves, and let's say you are sleeping in on a Saturday morning, and your mom or dad is downstairs, and they are cooking you breakfast, okay? And so you were waking up by the smell of bacon, and so you get really excited for breakfast downstairs. Well, how'd that bacon scent come to you? Well, you're down, well your parents are downstairs cooking you breakfast. Those uh, gas particles that are being, are, that are, um, have the scent on them, it's actually traveling from the kitchen, through your house, up the stairs, into your bedroom, and finally into your nose. Um, it's going from a high concentration, the kitchen, to low concentration, your bedroom. So, um, and the gas particles are going through the material air that's already in your house. So that is an example of diffusion. Um, an example of effusion, uh, where the flow of gas through a small opening, might be a tea kettle. Um, a tea kettle, the gas uh, evolved in the boiling of water in a tea kettle, um, escapes a small hole in the opening and making that whistling sound. That is an example of e effusion. Um, also, maybe gas particles escaping from a nylon balloon, the helium gas uh, in the nylon balloon escaping and the gas shrink and the balloon shrinking. That is an example of effusion also. So let's talk about what that actually means and how fast those particles go. All right, so we know the rate of effusion is equal to the square root, um, the inverse of the square root of the molar mass. So let's actually uh, put that into action. So I'm going to go straight to the, um, typically when you're talking about the rates, you're going to compare one gas to another. So you're going to compare gas A to gas B. And this is actually uh, Graham's law, and I'll get to this in just a second, but I want to describe it in a pictorial way down here. Okay, so let's say you're comparing the rates of hydrogen, hydrogen chloride um, gas, which has a molar mass of 36 grams per mole, to the rate of ammonia gas, which is 17 grams per mole. On one end, at the same exact time, you're going to have um, this gas enter the tube and this gas enter the tube. And together, when they meet, they're actually going to have a reaction. A reaction is going to occur. So um, let's actually do that. So at the same time, you're going to enter, um, you're going to put in, I'm going to get another marker. You're going to put in hydrogen chloride into one end of the tube, and at the same exact time, you're putting in ammonia to the other end of the tube. Now, what's going to happen? Well, the gas particles are going to flow, and we decide they're going to flow from, one, from high concentration to low concentration. So they're going to start flowing towards each other. Um, this guy is really big and heavy, 36 grams per mole, and this guy is really light and skinny, 17 grams per mole. So this guy should travel faster than this guy, right? Um, so this guy's going to travel fast, 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 fast. This guy's going to travel slow comparatively because it's really heavy and, and, uh, and heavy in weight. So they're actually probably going to meet closer to the hydrogen chloride end, probably around here, where you're going to get ammonium chloride meet, probably typically around here because this is going to travel um, a lot faster than this guy. So if you were to compare the rates and actually find the rates, when you compare them, the rate of A compared to the rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of A on the bottom um, and over the molar mass of B on top. So let's just put, the, put this into practice. What is the molar mass of a gas that diffuses three times faster than oxygen under similar conditions? Okay, so oxygen has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. Okay, and this unknown gas, we don't know. We have unknown gas. Okay, this guy travels uh, three times faster. So I'm going to say it travels three moles per second. Okay? Um, sorry, we're going to make it three meters per second. Sorry, that makes more sense. Then oxygen tra gas travels, if this travels three times faster, this is going to travel one meter per second. Okay, so if we were to put this, the rate of A, where I'm going to say unknown gas is A, oxygen is going to be B. Okay, the rate of A is 3 meters per second. The rate of B is 1 meter per second. And this is going to equal the square root of, and don't forget to flip them, molar mass of A, in this case we don't know, X, over the molar mass of B, in this case of 32 grams per mole. Uh, so we want to solve what x is. Okay, well, an easy way to do this is square both sides. And that's going to give me 9 equals 32 over x. So when we multiply x times 9, we get 9x equals 32. Um, we divide both by 9. x equals 3.55 grams per mole. This is my molar mass of my unknown gas. Okay, so this is how we can do it mathematically, and these are the kind of questions you're probably going to see. Um, let's actually go and watch a video of um, Graham's Law in action.
I promise to show you something really cool as long as you promise not to try it at home. Okay? Okay. Now, everyone wants to know why my voice sounds higher when I inhale helium. A simple fact is that helium is six times less dense than air, which means sound waves travel through it much faster, which makes my voice sound much higher. Now, the same effect can be achieved in reverse if I inhale something like sulfur hexafluoride, which is six times denser than air. I inhale some of that, and my voice gets really low, although somehow I'm still funny. It's scientific! <laughs> All right, so how did Graham's Law play a part of that? Well, <clears throat> helium that he inhaled was actually very, very light. So it traveled through his throat and traveled through his vocal cords very quickly, and so made it made his voice very, very high. Um, sulfur hexafluoride is extremely heavy. Um, he said dense, and that's the same, same idea, heavy or dense. Um, and it, travels th it made the travel through the vocal cords very, very slowly, making his voice very, very deep. So that is an actual real-life example or a fun example of Graham's Law.